Okay, so let me see. Attempts to sneak out peacefully, but is recognized by Thompson. This leads to a car chase inside the encampment. The police fire automatic weapons at the tow truck, which frightens the prisoners who are hiding in the cafe. Eventually, Krabs crashes, but manages to elude the police on foot. He finds Carmen and unsuccessfully attempts to reason with her. He kisses her and wishes her well. Krabs disarms Thompson and forces him to delete his profile, but his escape attempt ends in a violent confrontation with the police. Thompson is accidentally killed. And the remaining policemen hunt down crabs. I thought they were going to tell us who did the stunt, but that didn't happen. Hmm. Way to waste our time. <laughs> <laughs> we're all now dumber. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> On this episode of the MacGuffin Guild, we're going to become part of a drive-in-based concentration camp for outcast youths in Dead End Drive-In. This 1986 action stunt drama and questionable horror stars Ned Manning, Natalie McCurry, Peter Whitford, Wilbur Wilde, among others. Directed by Brian Trenchard Smith. We're going to talk about comparisons to Mad Max, the choose your own adventure moment, misleading cover art, and the works of Brian Trenchard Smith. We'll dig into the metric system, Rambo Takes Russia, this film's nominations, and we'll discuss whether or not countries remake American films. We'll also dig into the true pronunciation of Stephen King, this film's commentary on society, Joe Bob Briggs' first annual drive-in jamboree, Max Maxwell and Guy Norris, the illusion of freedom, and we'll question why this film is classified as horror. I'm Pat Doherty, and as always, I'll be joined by my fellow MacGuffins, Justin Jones and Mike Antonio. Our theme song was written and performed by Jordan Vincent. The price of admission is the rest of your life in Dead End Drive-In. I raised you better than this. And welcome to another episode of the MacGuffin Guild. As you all know, a MacGuffin is a plot device used to drive along a story, and we here on the Guild like to use the film that we select as a MacGuffin to drive along our conversation. I am Pat Doherty, and as always, I am with my fellow MacGuffins, first and foremost, Mr. Justin Jones. Justin, how's it going? Feeling good and relaxed. <laughs> Is that Liar. everything all right? Why are you so relaxed? Um, I don't know. Just excited to be here <laughs> in person. So, so excitement gets you relaxed? The excitement That's... got me relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, before I introduce Mike, uh, we are, for the first time in a hot minute, back in the same room together. So this is a nice change of pace. Instead of... Doing it via the interweb as we had been for the right. last, uh, I don't even know. When did we go virtual? I mean, probably, shit, when did we, it's been a while. Yeah. At least a year, right? No. Was it a year? Couldn't have been. I don't know. Uh, it feels like forever ago. Anyway, we're back in the room. So, with us, Mike Antonio. Mike, how's it going? <laughs> with us. Like, also, <laughs> also, <laughs> st oh yeah, yeah. also yeah. starring, yeah. starring. Yeah. Okay, starring. <laughs> Oh, what episode was that? I I remember. <laughs> Introducing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, it's me. You good? Yeah, yeah. Everything's good. You feeling nice and fired up and relaxed? <laughs> Dude, I am so hyped up. I am at the utmost state of relaxation. <laughs> I'm ready to fuck shit up. I'm so relaxed. Uh, That's the joys of being a middle child. I can feel both things equally at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, should we put that on a t-shirt like you want to get relaxed yeah mcguffin guild yeah. <laughs> oh shit anyway i don't know how to like uh flip that into the next segment here. speaking of relaxed excitement <laughs> i don't know dead end drive-in yeah i would actually classify this movie that way because there's like like lots of lulls in the movie and then there's like action mm-hmm so. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of action packed, but it's all also kind of uh, relaxing, and it's like a comfort movie already. It, it, yeah, it yeah, is. yeah. All right. Well, I should have I should have segued like that then. So thank yeah. you. Well, you well, didn't. Due so, to the power of editing, you? anything <laughs> is possible. <laughs> all right. So real quick before we proceed, first a spoiler ravaged synopsis. In the near future, drive-in theaters are turned into concentration camps for the undesirable and the unemployed, who are placated with new wave music, junk food, drugs, exploitation movies, and racism. 
The prisoners don't really care to escape because they are fed and they have a place to live, which is in most cases probably better than the outside. Krabs and his girlfriend, Carmen, are put into the camp and all Krabs wants to do is escape the dead end drive-in. So yeah, Dead End Drive in 1986. I was six when this came out. I was seven. I was eight. There we go. We (laughs) We gave our ages away again. I like how when we first started this, we were all like cautious about our ages, and then we would drop a billion hints and clues, and now it's just blatantly obvious. Well, they're still going to have to do the math. True. Yeah. And if I were listening, I wouldn't spend the time to do the math, so... I'm kind of banking on that. See, I would, because I'm always, like, obsessed with, like, how old people are and stuff. I, yeah. I, I don't know. It's a weird thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Dead End Drive in 1986, rated R, one hour and 32 minutes long, which is short as hell. Yeah. What's the minimum that a film can be to be considered a feature? Uh, is it, like, 70 minutes? It's actually not very long. 70, 75, something, maybe somewhere in that range. I don't know. I know a lot of movies back in, like, the 80s, a lot of horror movies and stuff for, like, 80-something minutes. It's pretty common. Not anymore, though. All right, so here we go. A modern feature is typically between 80 and 180 minutes long, but different groups have different minimum lengths to be considered a feature. The Screen Actors Guild definition sets the minimum length at 80 minutes, while oh. AFI and BFI's definitions call any film longer than 40 minutes a feature. Wow. Hmm. Okay. It's interesting. So, yeah, it's much longer than that, but not by that much. <coughs> that was fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> so, directed by Brian Trenchard Smith, who has done a handful of stuff. Justin, you're familiar with some of his other works? Yeah, I've seen uh, Turkey Shoot, BMX Bandits, Man from Hong Kong. I think that's it. But then he also did Leprechaun 3 and Lepre- Leprechaun 4 in Space. Yeah. Which I've seen those, but mm-hmm. I have not seen any of his other films besides. Dead and Drive-In, but we'll get into that. Mm. Oh, actually, I've seen a couple of his shorts that he did, because on the uh, Blu-ray I have, the Arrow Video one, it has uh, one he did about uh, stuntmen, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then there was another one. I'm not sure what it was about. It was like a short film about a hospital catching all fire, which was pretty oh, wild. <laughs> well, I didn't realize that Quentin Tarantino, like this is like his, one of his favorite directors or something. Or yeah, he's like, very, lo- yeah. I didn't realize that, but then watching the the all his this guy's work with stuntmen and everything, mm-hmm. I kind of, I'm starting to see a connection, like sense, the inspiration yeah. and, mm-hmm. you know, like there's one guy, uh, Guy Norris, I think does multiple yes. roles in here, like four different roles. Like stunt as, man. oh, it's like stunt roles. He's a, yeah, he's a stuntman, but he's like playing he multiple characters as well. Yeah. He worked on Mad Max or? or uh, yeah, I think he did on Mad, one of the Mad Max. One of the Mad Maxes, yeah. Huh. Like he's the guy that's like sawing down the light post. Oh yeah, and I think yeah, he yeah. might be the guy in the car out the top of the car. Okay, he's the guy with the nunchucks. Okay, and he's uh, I think yet another guy in here. Nice, yeah. I had that's cool. No clue. So Mike, this was your selection. Before we get to your history, though, mm-hmm. shall we swing on over to Rotten Tomatoes? Swing away. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back in the groove. It'll happen eventually. <laughs> we just. Please, feel free to swing. (laughs) It has to happen naturally. It's not going to happen. On Rotten Tomatoes, Dead End Drive-In, out of zero critic reviews... What the fuck? 85. No critics have ever seen this movie? Well, they at least have none on file. Or they they deemed it unworthy of their reviews? (laughs) Untomatoable. Yeah, so we have nothing here on Rotten Tomatoes as far as critic scores go. so let me guess the critic score then. Uh, so audience score, do you guys want to guess that, Mike? Sure. Um, I would say this is a cult favorite. I would say not many people have seen this movie unless they're people who have, like, sought it out. Mm-hmm. So they're probably more <sighs> attuned to this type of film. I'm going to say it's still not going to be super high, but 63. Okay. Justin? Justin. 65. 42 percent oh man and that's based uh on over a thousand wow that's worldwide though i think when you think about it i think people in australia probably saw it 
I think there was some release issue here or something like that. Uh, I'm not positive. Uh, oh, okay. I do know that they were doing an like an American dub of it wow. that never that never happened. Never happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we should also mention if anyone hasn't picked up yet that this is an Australian film. Yeah, that's worth mentioning. So we're gonna go right to audience reviews, obviously. So Del Cid D says this is sort of a Mad Max or Escape from New York wannabe. So if you like that kind of 80s crud, it's for you, but yeah. I'm not much of a fan. Yeah, I like that crud. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I think here at the MacGuffin Guild, we're all about that crud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's our brand of crud. Crud life. Yeah. All right, Tim S. <laughs> <laughs> Tim S. says, strong premise, but with an unsatisfactory pace. I like the pace. I've seen other people say pacing issues with this, but I don't have a problem with it. I don't either. I think it works for this film. No. Personally. Uh, Loner Moves says, not as cool as its premise. That seems to be the word of the day here. Yeah. Do you feel that they kind of, the concept that they had, did they have enough, did it have enough gravitas I, or meat on the bones I, for it to be worth? I would say it could have spent a little more time outside in the world to see, to get a little more of a feel. Mm -hmm. Like they give you very little. I think it's core in its premise. I mean, I like it. The premise I, is that it's ridiculous. They they lure uh, the you the rebellious youth into a drive-in and then keep them there by stealing their tires. Like yeah. that's like it's kind of a ridiculous concept. Yeah. That, but like beyond beyond that, it's just a bunch of interesting social commentary. And so stuff exactly. Like that. Yeah. There is one question that I want to ask. I don't know if I should do it now or if I should wait. But it's kind of like if you look at this movie like a choose your own adventure. One decision that was made, I think, could have changed oh, yeah. everything for them, right? Oh, the the ticket. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when they when they pulled up to the theater, and he said the unemployed ticket or whatever. Yeah, they got to choose employed or unemployed. Right, and that's the basically like that's like you go on the list. So if he would have said he was employed, they, they would have probably they would have watched the movie and then and rolled. Then left. Yep. Yeah, it would have cost them what? Uh, I forget the difference in the yeah, price. Yeah, but it was only a box, a couple bucks, bucks, yeah. Total. Mm hmm I wondered that, because it didn't yeah. dawn on me right away, and then I thought back mm -hmm. later. Um, anyway, John W. says, Natalie McCurry is attractive. That is one saving grace for this mess of a movie. Absurd, impossible circumstances, and somehow, not one of the characters seem to recognize this. Borrowing heavily from Mad Max and other pseudo-punk, think mohawks, face paint, swastikas, it sinks under the weight of its own ridiculousness. Mm. I, I think just people didn't get it. Like, if you, you say, know, like, they know it's very self-aware, like, like, uh, goofiness. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think, I think I've heard a person thinks that it was thinking that it was too I think serious. the Mad Max comparison is a little... I, everybody says that, and I'm like, okay, so it's got some car stunts here and there. It's mildly futuristic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other than that, the story's completely different. Yeah. yeah. And, oh, and it's Australian. Sorry. I think that's the key. Is they're like, oh, it's Australian, and it's in the 80s, and that's when Mad Max was, so it's the same thing. Yeah. It's like, no. To me, it's very different. Well, Brian... Uh, Trenchard. Trenchard Smith said that... I think he said that like it's just like there's a big car culture in Australia. Sure. So mm -hmm. it's like not uncommon, especially yeah. in the 80s. You can tell to see, looking like, at their cars, yeah, like, yeah. the cars they use, that they're you know into it. Yeah, exactly. All right, Rod E. So Rod, space, capital uh, E. Not Roddy. Not Rowdy Roddy. <laughs> not yeah. Roddy Piper. Rod E. says, having seen this many times in the old video store back in the day in the horror section, I wanted to see this but never did. Maybe it was the kind of clowny yet crowish eye makeup by the guy on the cover. Well, I finally saw this and it was a huge bore. I really do not understand why this was in the horror section back then when it could have easily been in the action section. Well, okay, more near the Mad Max movies, which this sucks heavily compared to in terms of car action. Some of the ideas were cool. Even having a runtime of less than an hour and a half, there wasn't much going on, and this is pretty much a dud. Dead End Drive-In, more like Dead End Movie that went nowhere. Ooh. Very clever. <laughs> but I think um, I disagree. I just totally disagree. Yeah. Uh, is it a horror movie? No, absolutely not. But it is in that, like, cult kind of off the beaten path type of film that would fit in with horror films and, and yeah. science fiction and stuff. I think based on the 
cover, like he said, yeah. and the name of it and everything. If you're like a mom and pop shop or something, like, I don't know, I've never seen it. Like, mm-hmm. some of them are probably watching all of them, but like, some are probably, like, I don't know, hard. Well, yeah, it's called Dead End Driving. Dead yeah. End Driving, yeah. And that and that cover, I know the cover he's talking about, which is not the artwork for that Blu-ray release, which Correct. that Blu-ray cover art is awesome. It is awesome. It's it's great. So what's on that? What's on the Blu-ray? Just like, it's if like you could a, paint us a picture... It's a commissioned art piece, like somebody actually. Yeah, there's like it shows the cars and it has them, like the actual people in the movie. I don't know who the crow guy is on the on yeah that cover, old like, cover. Yeah, it's interesting because. But uh, it like the new. It's like very vibrant, colorful. Mm. Looking. I think it has the star driving. It does. Yes. Uh, sign. I kept waiting for that crow looking dude to pop up, and it just never yeah. happened. Right. Mm-hmm. Deleted scene. In that past review that you just read, mm-hmm. was he the one that mentioned the the girl? In the film, or was that the one before that? I think that was before. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but she died a few years ago. Oh, did she really? Like, I didn't know that. 2014. Yeah, I don't know how. I don't know what the circumstances are, but yeah. Well, we're gonna get to the bottom of that. That's aren't, a shame, aren't we? Oh, yeah, 2014 at 48. Damn, that's hmm. crazy. Wow, 48. Yeah, that was from John W. Who gave it one star. That was his review. Oh, okay. I do want to say that the car that he uh, borrows from his brother. It's a sweet fucking car. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a 56 Chevy, maybe? I think it's a 56 Chevy, yeah. Convertible? Mm. All right, so Addison D. says, Very underrated 80s post-apocalyptic drive-in prison. Creative to a high point. They just don't make movies like this anymore. There you go. If you've never seen, will make your day memorable. That's what he says. Let me read that sentence again. If you've never seen, will make your day memorable. <laughs> well, thanks. I think he's missing a word or two in oh, there. Yeah. Five out of five, Addison says. But before we proceed, Justin, you said before we started recording here that the films that were on the screen during this movie are particular films. So what do you know about that? Oh, yeah. When they're in the drive and they're showing uh, scenes from Turkey Shoot. I think a couple of his movies. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm trying to think. That one and something else. Man from Hong Kong, I think they show parts of that, too. Hmm. But those scenes, they, he said those scenes match up to, like, when they're What's driving. What's going yeah, on? When they're driving, because in Turkey Shoot, there's, like, people getting, like, you know, captured and taken into a camp, an mm-hmm. encampment. So they're showing, as they're driving into the encampment, it shows the vehicle that they're arriving oh, in in the movie. So nice. there's a lot of... If you watch what's Parallels. going on on the screen, it's very similar to what's nice. happening in the movie you're watching. That's pretty, pretty cool. cool. I didn't pick up on that. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have known it because I didn't see those other films. So. Mm. Jacob S. says, I finally got around to seeing this one, and this movie serves as a reminder of how Australian films are the best at portraying the wasteland. Hmm. It's kind of a cool point. That yeah, is a good yeah, point. I do like that, yeah. Rhett P. says, I really enjoyed this for what it was. Sure, some of the acting was subpar, but the production design, premise, and stunts made it really worthwhile. And that's a very valid point. Yes. That's that, say, that statement when people say that, I like it for what it is. Like, what is it? It's a, like... There's, people don't say that about these like million billion dollar no. summer blockbusters that suck. They're like, yeah. well, for what it was, like mm-hmm. people don't say that. You know what I mean? Yeah. For the record, I wasn't. That wasn't the part of her sentence I was honing in on. I was honing in on the part where she says the stunts made it really worthwhile, and that is. Oh yeah, that's that a, is and the set you, design. You get and, your money's worth out of the stunts alone. Yeah. That review there to kind of piggyback off what you were saying, Justin, when. People, they clearly sometimes go in with these preconceived notions of what f- whatever film X is they're getting ready to go watch. And that's kind of unfair that they that they say then, you know, well, it's good for what it is. Well, what is it and what are you comparing it to that makes you... Yeah, what, yeah. You know, yeah what's the comparison? That knocks it down a couple yeah. notches. Maybe you should watch it for what it is. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, yeah, 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 and yeah. get the enjoyment or look for the enjoyment in that way, you know? Yeah, he said, um, he referred to his movies, like even in the... I watched the d- director's commentary on the Blu-ray, mm. and he starts off and he's like... I'm Brian Trenchard Smith, and I make wacky movies. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it's all about like he, he like he, they're just wacky. Like I guess he makes more serious ones too, but like he, they're intentionally like fun. Yeah, and, and crazy. Yeah. Like yeah. And, and actually listening to him, like all these little parts. Like there's a part where they they steal the tires, and he runs in front of the. Uh, the projection booth. Mm-hmm. He was talking about it was one of those old projection booths where they had to like actually change like the reels were on different mm-hmm. cameras, and they would actually have to change the reel. 
And but he wanted. To, they made sure that as he was going through, they changed the reel. Oh. Yes, to show that it's. Yes. Yeah, like mm. little tiny details like that. I think there's tons of that in this. Eric R says, "Dead End Drive In is the type of film which I am ashamed to say I never watched until now." The film takes place in a post-apocalyptic Australia. We are introduced to our main character, Krabs, a young man, whom wishes he was bigger and stronger like his brother. Mm. One night, Krabs takes his girlfriend to a drive-in movie theater, which later we find out is actually an internment camp set up by the government. This isn't much of a review. Um, Krabs is told he cannot leave, and most of the film follows him as he tries to figure out how to get the parts of his 57 Chevy, which he needs to escape. The film is pretty much... And look, okay, I gotta be honest. That's I'm only about maybe a quarter of the way through this Jesus. thing. Let's get to the end here. Uh, the inclusion of a racist subplot might not have been necessary, but the irony of white supremacists holding an anti-Asian rally during a screening <laughs> of Trenchard Smith's The Man from Hong Kong is delicious. <laughs> See, I, I don't know. I like the aspects of of that, those aspects of this film. It's, you know, they they're in this place. They kind of create their own society, and then they start doing what society does. Mm. Yeah, they start turning on each other. It's a commentary on society. Yeah, totally. Like that's that's what I dig about this movie, and it's done in a, you know, with a nice fun layer of icing on top. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, let's do this then. So we got through the reviews, gave kind of a range. Mike, this is your selection, so I want to know your history first. Okay. And then and then uh, Justin and I will bounce off of that. Now, this movie uh, is not one that I grew up on. It's not, you know, not one that I saw when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I saw it a few years ago. Um, whenever Arrow released the Blu-ray, I knew it was coming out, and I... And I like Arrow. I like the stuff they release. Mm. Uh, much like Zero Boys, which we covered. You should you guys check that episode out if you have not already. Probably around that same like year or two that that came out, they put out Dead End Drive-In. And I just blind bought it. I think a couple people that I know on Facebook were saying, you know, it's coming out. And I was like, oh, okay. These guys seem to like it, so I'll, I'll just buy it. Watch it. I loved it. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's great. And I've seen it numerous times since, and I just thought it would be a good one to talk about because mm. it's, it's got a lot of depth to it, even though it's just kind of silly and over the top and a little little ridiculous. But mm. at the same time, there's there's it says something, mm -hmm. you know. But that's my history with it. I don't have a huge history with it, but yeah, I, don't know, I just as soon as I saw it, I just immediately thought it was a cool movie, mm -hmm. and I became a fan. Sweet, Justin. Yeah, I haven't seen. I hadn't seen it until uh, Mike suggested we watch it. And when I when I saw it on the list, I was like, "Watch the trailer for it." And I was like, "Oh man, I can't wait to watch this." Yeah. I was like, just from the trailer alone, I was like pulled in. So that's why I bought it sight unseen. Or, oh, did you? Like when I went, yeah, when I went to the drive-in a couple weeks ago, and I saw it there, I just bought it. Not the dead end drive-in. No, not the dead end drive-in. The drive-in by our house and the Mahoning drive-in. But, um, I yeah, I saw it there and I picked it up immediately. I was like, yeah, I'm definitely buying this. Mm. And uh. Yes, the Arrow video one. Right. And um, and I wasn't let down either. I loved watching it. Mm -hmm. I, th I watched it twice that week. I watched oh, cool. it once, you know, straight through and then watched it again with the uh, director's commentary. Nice. And um, yeah, it was awesome, man. I liked it a lot. And um, again, like, I I've never even heard of it until Mike, Mike yeah. mentioned it. No, and much like you, I had never heard of it previous to Arrow putting it out. Never knew of its existence. I never saw the mm. video, like, even in the video store. Nothing. So did it have a release, like, in the U.S.? I, I don't know. Or do you think it's just, like, started to make its mainstream, quote-unquote, way over here? Maybe it didn't make its way over here immediately, and it eventually found it. Yeah. Ooh, excuse me, found its way here? I guess, you know, I know that there was, they were doing an, an American dub, but then I guess they got, like, near completion, and then realized they didn't have the rights to do that. Mm. Oh. And, and, um... So they they scrapped it. So I think that probably set things back. And then I I think there's some distribution. So what did they? Right. How how do you not have the rights to do an American dub? I don't understand. I'm not sure the details behind it, but that's mm. what he said in the director's commentary mm. that they they just didn't have. There was something about. I think because the you know the actors that play in here, I think they have certain rights. You know, okay. about using mm. their image and their you know because they're oh. it's. 
you know, it's how they get more work too, is yeah. by people seeing and hearing yeah. them and everything. Sure. So I'm sure there was probably some kind of yeah. Screen Actors Guild in. Yeah, no, or that that makes sense. If yeah. it's coming more from the from the actor side, I didn't know if it was be, like you you don't have the rights to use a an American accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they um they did that with like Mad Max. Yes, though. they did, mm -hmm. and it was like it's weird, weird. Yeah, it's really weird. Which is the one I think we probably saw as kids growing up, I'm sure. Sure, yeah, I'm sure yeah. that's the version we saw when we were younger. I don't remember, because mm -hmm. I'm so used to hearing the, you know, the natural, mm -hmm. uh, the original voice actors now, because they finally restored that, or, you know, finally released that over here. I just, I think it's really weird that they have to, like, when you bring something to another country, you have to, like... Like, I feel like they do it all the time. It's like, they'll do remakes, like Old Boy, or what was it? Yeah, yeah. Let the Right One In, or something. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, two years after that movie, oh, like, oh we're going to do an American version. Like, so, why can't we just watch the version well, and lot, learn something? Because a lot of Americans won't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the, but I was, I was saying, why won't we do that? But is that just an American thing, that Probably we not. just do that? Or um, do other countries do that? Like, for example, if... America puts out Forrest Gump, and then, like, later on, do you have South Korea making their own version of, like, South Korea and Forrest Gump? Well, yeah. Where they use their own histories and, and, and politics to... You do have the whole Bollywood, you know, the um, Indian. Yeah, no, but they I'm just wondering that. if other countries, like, see what American... Uh, you know what Hollywood makes and American mm. filmmakers make do they remake it for their culture or do they just kind of accept in the American blockbusters or whatever as um, is they're more prone to I think because American films are successful pretty much worldwide mm -hmm. I mean and plus I, I feel like they sometimes I feel like like Transformers or something didn't they like they 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 catered like, it to the one is filmed partially in like China I think or like, like Hong yeah Kong. No, or something the way they filmed it they catered more to the mm. Chinese audiences because they were making a like a yeah, killing they make over a there load of money over so there so they kind of more focused well, on and then in you for another example um, like I know a lot of the Italian horror films from the 70s and 80s sometimes they would purposely do it in a way for an American audience. Oh, yeah. They would, like, tailor it mm -hmm. for an American audience because they knew that's where they were going to make their money. Like setting it in New York or yes. Louisiana yes. or Correct. something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fulci films. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I never really thought about but uh, oh, if that was just an American approach or if other countries do the same. Another point, again, going back to, like, America versus, like, other countries, a lot of other countries speak English. Mm-hmm. Over oh, here, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's like a second, like they just learn as a yeah, second language. They yeah, they learn as a second language, like very common. Mm. You could go to like Italy and go into a little shop and they can talk to you. Okay, so I guess what I'm learning here is this says far more about us as Americans than it, it does it about does, us. Probably. <laughs> it does. It's, a, it's an interesting we're thing. We're not willing to learn anything yeah. other than what we have to. Another example metric system. Mm. Pretty much the rest of the world uses it. Except for us. Yeah. It's just, just, I guess it's how we stand apart. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting you mentioned that, too, because, you know, I, got, I play board game. I'm a board gamer, and I play, like, um, all these, like, DIY games where you just buy a book, and, and uh, you, you get the pieces and components and build them all out. Mm -hmm. Well, I noticed that one, there's a guy, he's a British guy, mm -hmm. but he makes all the units of measurement inches and stuff Does in all he? his games. So mm -hmm. I wonder if that's in a situation where he's... Trying to appeal trying to, to... Yeah, appeal to... Or he's told to. Yeah, maybe, yeah. You know. It is interesting. I mean, it, it, I don't know what I don't know what that says about America exactly, but it... it I could say, but I think it's just going to go down a political yeah, road. Yeah, we don't want to go down <laughs> that Let's route. do that. Why not? It's about time. What are we, on episode 36? It's been a good run. Let's get, let's get political. It's been a good run. Yeah. No. Yeah. We'll save it for our 50th episode yeah. and go down in flames. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is wild, though, how you have a film like, you know, Ringo. 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 <laughs> Ringo. <laughs> that's, that's the lizard. <laughs> Is that, that Pixar or whatever? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I'd love to Ring see the Bollywood version of that. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, let me try that again. You have a film like Ringu, <laughs> not Ringo. You have a film like Ringu, and then literally, it's like it's only a handful of years later we re remade it, right? Sure. Yeah. I don't yeah. think it was. Let me see. It when wasn't the, long. Couple years. Crazy. Yeah, there's a few of them like that, yeah. And then sometimes you'll have the same director for, like, an example, uh, Funny Games. 
Mm-hmm. You ever see that? Yeah. No. That's Tim Roth? The remake is. Yeah. Tim Roth and, um, is it Naomi Watts? Mm-hmm. It's, uh, I think he's German, the director. And it was a German film, and I think ten years later or something, he did a remake of his own film. It's almost shot for shot. I've seen both versions. Oh, really? There's minor differences here and there, but it's so similar well, I tell you, but it's in English. Yeah. With American act well, actually British actors <laughs> playing Americans. <laughs> well, it's like Sporlos and Ven the oh, Vanishing. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. you've already covered. Oh, yeah. yeah. What was yeah. eighty eight to ninety three? I yeah. saw I saw one of those movies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Do you care to partially tell us about it? <laughs> Check out our two-part episode on Vanishing and what's the other? Sporlus. Sporlus. Yeah, the one that I didn't see. So the yeah, the Ring Ringu came out in '98, and the Ring Americanized right. came out in uh, 2002. Yeah. So we're only yeah. talking four years later. It's crazy. That is crazy. And like uh, one of you mentioned, um, uh, old boy. Yeah, I love the original. Yeah, the original is great. I could, I didn't even even see the remake because I was like, it's, I love the original so much. I don't hate the remake, but it's unnecessary. Yeah. There's no reason for it. I yeah, thought, other than for an American audience. Yeah. yeah. Though I did when I watched uh, Let the Right One In. The remake is Let Me In. Let Me In. Yeah. Well, I remember I first watched the dubbed version of that, and I was like, this movie makes zero sense to me. I have no idea what's going on. And I, in that case, I could see them like redoing it because I, I think something like was completely lost on me. Yeah. Then I watched it again, uh, subbed, like subtitled. Okay. And I felt like I was watching a whole nother movie. Like I completely got it. Yeah. So I don't know if it, like you know something was something lost. Something was lost in translation with yeah. the uh, translation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I read that book. You have a way also. of words. Mm-hmm. Uh, how was that? Did you did you read the American version or did you <laughs> well, read? Well, the- it was the uh, it was in English, yeah. or I wouldn't have been able to read it. <laughs> The book's good too. A lot more detail, but there's there's things from the original film and things from the remake that are in the book. If that makes sense, some yeah. things that are in one film and not in the other film, but they're and vice versa, but they're both in the book. That makes sense. That, I guess when you, whoever read the book, I guess took you know mm-hmm, or they took mm-hmm. whatever influences from the book that they wanted. So that to was kind of yeah. That's neat. pretty neat. Yeah, because uh oh, I don't know who did that. I was thinking old boy because uh. Uh, Spike Lee did Old Boy, didn't he? Yeah, he did the remake, yep. So, story by Peter Carey. I'm just looking up uh, who wrote and did the screenplay. Uh, okay. Peter Carey did the story. Peter Smalley did the screenplay. Peter uh, and Peter? Yeah, the, the Peters. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, guys, at home, we are three middle-aged men, yeah. and we just laughed at Peters. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, so only six writing credits hmm. for uh, Peter P- Peter Carey. What? <laughs> <laughs> so Peter right. Smalley on the screenplay. Peter Smalley's got nine writing credits. Okay. I'm trying to see if there's anything that jumps out at me. The Wild Duck. Nope. The Return of Captain Invincible. Nope. Cop Shop. Wow, that's a cool name. Emma's War. Speaking of something about ducks, uh, Howard the Duck came out on Blu-ray today. Oh, did it? Yeah, man. Did you order it? Yeah, I got it. Got in the mail today. Yeah. I so love that movie. wait, you opened it, you got it in the mail, and then you had something else delivered. Something else got delivered after I left. Yeah. Dude, I get I get packages all the time. Yeah. It's what I do. I feel. You ever uh, like go? I don't know if you guys get this feeling, but like if you happen to go to the mall or, or go out shopping or something mm-hmm. with, with your wife or whatever for the day, mm-hmm. and you come back home and you didn't buy anything, do you ever feel like, ugh? I used to. It, that I know exactly the feeling you're talking yeah. about. I, I think that feeling has started to wear. I don't get it as much anymore. I agree with you. Yeah. However, if I don't have stuff coming in the mail regularly... You have that feeling. I'm just like I have I have nothing to look forward to when I like pull up to the mailbox like mm-hmm. oh here's a here's an ad yeah you know it's weird even if it's just something so every day you like to have something not every day but generally how many times a week on average how well, most days wow. I get so would you say at least four days a week you're getting something probably in the mail? Yeah. should we start writing letters to each other instead of calling and, and texting each other yes. It's funny. I never, th- I haven't thought about that feeling in a long time. In fact, I think that feeling has started to kind of shift a little for me, where 
if I buy something I feel that I really didn't need, then I feel the opposite of that feeling. Yeah. I feel like, oh, why did I buy this? I, I mean, I do do that, but yeah. I don't do that often. Yeah. Unless it's something like pricey and I'm just like, I shouldn't have spent that money on that mm. thing. Like, that was dumb. But yeah. I already did it. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. That wedding was expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> no, no regrets. Yeah. Nope. Uh, all right. Well, my history with this film is I'd never never seen it. I do feel like I've seen that the cover though, the cover that has that crow looking the old, character. The old cover, yeah, the, the one. Cover. I mean, he literally looks like a combination of the crow and Sting, the wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that before for sure. Okay. And to be honest, I did think this was, and maybe it's the misconception of just kind of like you see that cover, you see the title, and you do think it's horror mm -hmm. um i mean it's even called on imdb action drama horror the word horror really shouldn't be there does not apply at all. and i was a little surprised by that i, I thought i was going to get more of a they make it look like a slasher yeah they make that crow looking dude look like he's going to be like the dude that's just like you know creeping around and cutting people's heads off when they're making out making whoopee in the car but that was not the case yeah i'm trying to think i can't think of what specifically I would call horror? Horror? In Nothing. Here. I would. I wouldn't think anything is really horror. I mean, being trapped somewhere where you can't get out, but that's still yeah. Like you wouldn't call like a Prison Break movie a horror movie. True. Yeah. So I don't know. I will say that my favorite character in this film mm -hmm. is the the lanky dude yes! in the red shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing as me. that guy is so. Gloriously over the top. Do, yeah. we, do we know his name? I do not. I don't even know what his character's name is. There's that one point in this movie where he's like laughing, <laughs> like like no, doing like no. a ha 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 like thing. But mm -hmm. the way he does it is insanely hilarious. It's, yeah, it's over the top. <laughs> I think he plays Haza. I think it's Wilbur Wild Wild is the actor. Okay. Oh, okay. He, he was terrible saying, actor in this. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, I mean that's what he's going for. Yeah, but he was, yeah, I was so yeah, he was a lot of fun. He's completely hamming it up. Yeah, the what <laughs> I can't do it. He's, from, he's like, from Baston. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Trenchard Smith said the scene where um, Thompson like takes takes him under his wing and he goes to, to yeah. the projector where it shows that shot. Like of, out over the drive through behind him, he said he regrets that wide shot. Okay. Because you can clearly see, it's supposed to be in the middle of nowhere, you can clearly see houses and stuff oh. and cars yes. driving by. There's like a residential area yeah. right next to it. Yeah. He's like, I don't know why I didn't just put him like a close up because there's a part like later in there where it like closes in on Thompson's face mm -hmm. and he's like, I could have just done everything here or had like a little low curtain mm -hmm. and it would just totally would have cut out all those houses. Wow. But you yeah. could even see cars driving up and down the road, like, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, if, if that wasn't pointed out, you'd never notice it. Yeah, I, I did. I've seen this movie multiple times, but then I saw, I watched a video on YouTube, a little review, and it was mentioned, and I was like, oh my but god. You could just assume, though, that maybe they're the employed. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. And they're outside of. Yeah. You know, well, no, I mean, but it would be easy for them to escape. Oh, like, if I you see. look, yeah, it'd be easy. Yeah. Oh, I'll just hop over this grass wall yeah. and <laughs> hop on the back of a car or something yeah. like that, and you're yeah. out of there. You know what I mean? Because the, the way they the way they present it is that they're in the middle of nowhere, and the only way to get there is the S road. Oh, and if you get caught sense. walking on the S road, you're not allowed to walk on it yeah. or anything like that. Yeah, it's mandatory, like 18 months or and something it's like, like a, that. Which they, is what Tango and Cash got for murder. So that's some <laughs> serious business. <laughs> Oh, uh, it said it's like five kilometers or something, this yeah. road, whatever that is. I don't know how much that is in miles, because I'm American. Yeah. yeah it's like, <laughs> and we don't need to know that, goddammit. <laughs> yeah. Every three feet a meter, so it's, yeah. it's a lot. Yeah, I don't uh, know. I thought every three feet was a yard. Yeah, but a yard and a meter are very similar. They're oh. very, very, very comparable. Uh, very, very, very. Oh, Jesus. They're comparable. I will say... The closest thing to horror in this film was the car accident in the beginning. Oh, and yeah. And the mangled body yeah. laying face down That's on true. the ground. I want to talk about the whole, um, the world of this film. Mm -hmm. The world building. Okay. You know, we, we don't get a lot of it, but we get enough of a taste at the beginning of the film. You know, uh, like you mentioned, Pat, the car wreck. I think it's an interesting aspect that they're kind of all fighting over the wreckage of cars. Mm -hmm. Like the parts, the scraps of 
car parts are like so precious in this world. Yeah, kind of like, like, like Mad Max. It's like dueling tow trucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and I I will give them that for with Mad Max. I mean, in Mad Max, it's fuel. They're mm -hmm. looking for. Gasoline, gasoline, or however they say. <laughs> That's a horrible, horrible Australian accent. Anyone listening to Australia, you probably turned it off right at that point. Uh, yeah. Uh, but in this, it's the actual car parts themselves mm. that they're after. And you've got the, the tow truck guys fighting each other. No, I claimed this. No, I did. I paid the cops off so I could get this. They're, like, fighting over it. And then you have the roving bands of punk kids, mm. uh, the, the car boys, they yeah. call them. That come in there with weapons and try to like take it by force, take the cars by force mm -hmm. from the legitimate guys that are the tow truck guys. It it's kind of a neat little concept. I, I like it. I think it's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it said and and what would it say at the beginning? The Oh yeah. The uh so, yeah. the the events that led up oh, to yeah, where the, they're the at. The world now. events. I do think it was kind of funny when they were showing all the collapse of everything. I was like, is this supposed to be twenty twenty? Because it even starts off with oh, something yeah. in Sydney. Like, yeah. mm. where, like, if you think about 2020, like, the first disaster, like, it was, like, Australia bursting into flames. Yeah, that's right. So yes. That's right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it says, Sydney, January 26th, 1988, Bicentennial Celebration Spark the Rocks Riot, 51 Die. Mm. Then, uh, Tahiti, December 3rd, 1988. Marora Atoll destroyed by how do you say that? Marora Atoll? Is that how you say that? It's close enough. Destroyed by nuclear nuclear Jesus. Nuclear? N nuclear <laughs> nuclear accident. No. <laughs> nuclear accident. Pacific fishing grounds polluted. Mm. Then we have Cape Town, April first, nineteen eighty nine, the Great White Massacre. Hundred and three thousand die. Gold and diamond exports cease. Then New York, June 10th, 1990, the second Wall Street crash, world economic crisis spreads. Then inflation, shortages, unemployment, crime wave, government invokes emergency powers. So that's what led us to... Yeah, so... The, to the, this current world. The current state. My, my question is the whole uh, Great White Massacre. Mm -hmm. Was that... Does that mean... a? A lot of white people were killed? I, or well, does that mean that a lot of white people killed a lot of other people? I think... Or is a great white hunter like the... Uh, you know, that's saying, a good point. Because, Mike, you want to know what I originally perceived? where did it say it happened? Where did that happen? Was it Cape Town? That's Africa. South that's Africa. South Africa. So that's where, like, apartheid and stuff. And especially... And this, this is filmed in the 80s. Made yeah. in the 80s. So it's, you know... So it's an interesting. Yeah. I originally perceived it as a bunch of white people were killed, right? Um, but now that you bring that up, I don't know. Well, it could have been the Great that White Massacre. It could have been like an uprising, yeah. you know, taking their country back. Either way, or I, vice versa. I thought that set the stage for the clear racism that was portrayed in here. Yeah, because clearly the the. the the races were divided mm -hmm. going into this catastrophe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that was just par for the course at that point. But that's interesting. I don't know. I still, I don't know what to believe now. If it was white people that did the killing or white people that got killed. Yeah. Uh, that, that's uh, intriguing. But I will, I do want to ask you guys a question. I don't want to so, answer. I can't remember if you said it on the show, if it was off air, Mike, but you... Mm -hmm pretty much talked about how what we saw within the dead end drive in was kind of an encapsulation of society. Yes. With just we're racist, we're nasty, not all of us, but in general, you know, people are racist, they're nasty, they hate each other, they hate the others, you know, yeah. it's just people will be people no matter it's, where you put them. So once, once you have a certain amount of people in a closed off situation, they start forming groups. Mm -hmm. It's just it, yeah. It's just natural gravitation. Now, for good or bad, it, it, yeah. it happens. But then it went as far as, like, not just groups of, like, like-minded thinkers, mm -hmm. but, like, groups of, hey, there's the Asians. We can't, we don't like them. Yeah. You know, it was, like, clear racial divide. I, it, I'm wondering if that's, like, a thing that was going on in Australia. I don't know. I think there was a... I think he said that there was a lot of... Um, was it Vietnamese? Vietnamese... Uh, immigrants? Immigrants after the war and stuff that kind Going of went there. down there. So that was... And there was probably... It probably made them... Well, I know they don't... Uh, I don't know about now, but they didn't like the Aborigines. They, they treated them pretty poorly, too, in Australia for I'm a long sure. time. 
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I can't I speak yeah. to that. Yeah, that was a that was a thing. There was a because the the white people lived on the coasts, mm -hmm. and the Aborigines were further inland, mm -hmm. and they, you know, stayed separate pretty for the most part. Isn't it still sort of that way it today? Probably still. I yeah. I don't know for a fact, but mm -hmm. it probably is. I really don't know anything about it. Yeah, I might as well be on the other side of the world. Well, you are. Oh yeah. <laughs> so. Um... <laughs> Uh, yeah. But but here's the question I have about the racism uh, undertones. Well, if you can even call them undertones, they were pretty in your face. I want your guys' perception on this. Do you think that bringing that topic into the film helped it? Uh, helped kind of like sell the society, sell the, the world they were living in? What I sort of perceived was that that was building towards something that was going to crescendo. Now, I don't know. I'm not saying that, you know, Krabs, is that his name? Mm -hmm. Krabs, I'm yeah. not saying Krabs was going to create world peace and solve everyone's racial problems. Mm. But I thought maybe it was building towards him, like, bringing them together somehow or creating something that, yeah, I don't know, I something. I will say this. This movie actually almost proves the point of what the government is doing in this movie. Because yeah. all the people they have locked up they're not so great. Mm. He is, but he escapes. He knows he doesn't belong there. Yeah. Because he's there by mistake. Yeah. At the same time, it's like they were, like, they were impoverished. Like, True. You know what I mean? And now they're somewhere, oh, you, we feed you. We give you a place to live. Right. Like, they're living pretty good considering That's like, true. how they could have been living. So then when something comes in threatening that, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, well, this is our thing piece of crap and, and that's yeah. how like that always starts yeah and then and then it's people fighting over the scraps that the yeah. other people are giving them yes yeah, yeah. but i did want to answer your that question that is a good point uh-huh because it's funny you should mention that about him because he wanted to do a sequel to this uh -huh. where he actually gets arrested again uh-huh hmm. crabs gets arrested again and he comes back and people notice legend of this guy who escapes uh -huh. and then he becomes kind of like a messiah character oh, really? and then he and then at the end it's him leading them down the like parting nice like i'm being a uh -huh. moses character and, and bringing everyone and walking okay. them down the so, okay. so if this yeah. storyline so maybe had they were continued, building to that yeah I did see one thing where they said that the whole... I think it was a, a YouTube video about this movie. Can't, I watched a couple. But um, the person doing the video said that they didn't like the meeting that they had. Because they said it was just kind of a... Just an excuse to get everybody gathered in one place so that he could do what he needed to do to try to get his escape plan. And, and hmm. yes, but... Yeah, I... But isn't every story that way? Mm -hmm. Like, events have to happen yeah. as a distraction? Yeah. yeah. Whether it's planned by him or he's using it to his advantage in some way. But it still fit the, the story yeah, I, and the yeah, narrative yeah, everything. Exactly. I don't feel like if shoehorn, it's, like, out of nowhere, no, like, everyone's just going to meet in here. Because yeah, there's yeah, earlier yeah. in the film where they're hassling the one guy in the bathroom yeah. and he kind of sticks up for him. Yeah. Which, again, shows you he doesn't fit in with these people mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. And there's probably other people like that too. Yeah, there's probably all. Yeah, but they're focusing on they're him focusing against on, the. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. totally the, made like when they were unloading the bus fulls of Asian folk. They looked like families and stuff yeah, to yeah. me. So I'm sure a lot of those people were, they weren't perceived like as like punks with painted faces right. and mohawks. You right. know, they just looked like normal families right. that were in an unfortunate situation. It's funny, I write a review or something that somebody said, oh, I think this is supposed to be like allegory or something for uh, uh, like the uh, World War II. And, and mm -hmm. the, but I don't think so. I think to me, it's more about what happens every day everywhere. Like to, to me, this is more about like the welfare system. Yeah. Because that's exactly what it is. They give people who don't have anything enough just to survive, but it's not enough to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So because there's even that one, one yeah. line where she said like... Like, uh, they want to get out, but they know that they can't get out. And mm. that's why they don't try is because they just know they can't. You're just, you know what I mean? You're stuck with minimal amount of stuff. You just and accept then, it. Yeah. yeah. And then when people come in fighting for their scraps and stuff, and it causes all these other problems where, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. It's not there. It's not there to, it's not there to advance people. It's yeah, there not to, to placate boost. and pacify people. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. But that's interesting though, because that was one thing that I don't know if I was just reading too much into it, but I definitely, that was one of the things that felt like it was a loose end that wasn't tied up was that whole, yeah. right? I thought that was building to something and then homeboy fucking leaves. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, well, what was that about? Well, you he know? got like, out. Yeah. And I don't want to minimize no, no. The, the rest of the film at all. 
th- there were things about this film I really enjoyed, but that was the one thing that lingered. I'm like, where was that going? <laughs> like, yeah. What was? Well, I mean, now we know. I didn't. I didn't know that he planned to, you know, sequelize it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, anything else? I know Justin. Looks like you have some notes. So, do you want to do like some of your points? There? I can't really read them. <laughs> and uh... <laughs> Mike, that was all you had for the world building, right? Yeah, I just. I mean, like I said, they, they only gave us glimpse, a little glimpse. But I found that that tug of war between you know the police, the the tow truck people, and the mm. car boys, all like fighting again, fighting for the scraps. Yeah. Like Justin brought Oh, yeah. All, all of them. Even the, yeah. even the tow truckers that had nice vehicles and yeah. seemed to live, mm-hmm. you know, hardworking, modest lives. Yeah. They they were e- even fighting for yep. the the remnants. Yep. But, oh, I, do, I do have a few things. See, what happened is my notes from my last one I wrote in pen. Oh, jeez. And then I wrote in pencil on this side, so they're bleeding through. <laughs> so you'll probably get some weird sentences okay. coming out of me. Well, have at it. Floor is yours. Oh, I thought it was interesting that they worked from 3 p.m. to 5 a.m., which was, was their work day. Oh. That's why everything, even when there's day scenes, there's never any, like, every everything, which the lighting adds to the lighting and the mood, which I love of this, yeah. too. Yes. And use certain filters, like you use, like, yellow filters and mm-hmm. red, I think. I th- I visually, this movie's got a really good, like, unique look. Yeah. It reminded me sort of, like, uh... It I said it's look- unique. <laughs> It didn't look like it, but it did remind me of uh, Night of the Comet. Yeah, like some of the scenes in that with the real red, yeah, like yeah. the orange saturated colors skies. and stuff in the yeah. sky. Um, so I think I think when we're talking about the stunt man that worked in Mad Max, I don't know if that was guy. That might have been uh, guy, Grant Page. I think it's Guy something. I might, okay, it might have been Guy, guy Norris because he also worked with Grant Page, I think. Which okay, was another. No, I think man. it's the Guy guy. <laughs> that guy guy. <laughs> That guy. Is it Guy Morris? Yeah, Guy Norris. Norris. There's a, a the scene in here where it shows when they're watching turkey shoot and the guy's head explodes when he gets shot. Mm-hmm. He put That got cut from turkey shoot because the, the ratings board wouldn't put it in. So he, he, he snuck it in this one. To I give did him a hear little, that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A little stick it to you. It was, cool. it it was anyway. cut out of the actual film, turkey shoot, but he was able to wow. put it in to this film. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, I also like when Haza, when they're playing cricket, and then they get in a fight with the cricket bats. Oh, yeah. And Haza hits him, and he goes, four biscuits. Four biscuits, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, had to, like, I had the subtitles on, because I was like, wait, what did he say? And apparently that's like, you know, what they when they're playing cricket, like what, something that he doesn't move like a, a an ump would do, like for mm. four scores or something. Oh, okay. Uh, and then they had, I think, there, I missed what he was saying. There was some kind of camera work they did. It was, the, the, I think it was called a Ned Kelly camera or something like that. I don't know. Because it was armored, so they can kind of oh. like ram it into things. I guess kind of oh. almost like what uh, Sam Raimi may have did with the, remember when he put the camera on the board? Okay. But they armored armored the camera so it wouldn't get, you know. Neat. So it wouldn't get banged up. Yeah. Which I guess, I, I, I think mean, they were calling it the Ned Kelly. Yeah, I'm intrigued by that. Because hmm. Ned Kelly was that bandit that dressed all in armor. Like he had like... He wore a helmet and everything when he would like rob people. So they, they oh could, really? Yeah, he would like just bullets would bounce off him. I don't know about him. Well, you gotta look it up, learn a thing. I will. <laughs> we learned something today. Yeah, Ned Kelly. I'll be I'll be YouTube in that. I'm sure yeah, there's YouTube and, videos about him and four biscuits. <laughs> well, other than that, that's pretty much. I could uh, go for four biscuits right about now. Uh, I'm gonna have to look more into this Ned Kelly situation. Yeah, me it's too. interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'm intrigued by that. All right, so that's all your points, Justin. That's it. All right, well, should I do some Pat's points? Let's do it. Ooh. All right. Hit me. He's funny to the bite. He's begging with fire. Looking out through different eyes. Fresh mouth and he perceives the lies. Pat's points? <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you, Justin. I'm wheezing. <laughs> thank you, Huzzah. You're welcome. Is it... What is his name? Oh. Huzzah? Huzzah? Haza, Haza or Whatever. Huzzah? Whatever. You think I'm going to pronounce it correctly? <laughs> nope. You got yeah, we were doing really coming. well. I was like, eventually we have to mispronounce <laughs> someone's name. I'd leave it to me to get the five-letter word in yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Rambo takes Russia. Oh, part eight. Yeah, just yeah. see the posters. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I missed that. You, how did you miss that? It was like... 
I messed Sorry, up. The guy throws the throwing star at him and he dodges and oh, it hits. Oh, it says part eight. I never noticed it. I knew it was a Rambo poster. Yeah, I didn't notice. Rambo takes Russia. It hits Rambo right in the pectoral. Mm -hmm. I, I like. I do like how he's wearing a red bandana when he's doing his. Oh yeah. Or, you know, what do you call that? Like a Rambo bandana thing mm -hmm. around his head. A, a Rambana. A Rambana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Black Betty. Rambana Dana. I don't know. All right, so the car license plates. There's Towie. Towie. Yeah, Towie. And there's Frank, Frank one. one. Frank one. Towie. There's uh, another one. Uh, uh, chrome. Chrome, yeah. Splat. There's chrome was one. the, the, the uh, car boys that come to the accident. Okay. What was Splat? Splat was one of them in the beginning. One okay. of the tow trucks. Oh, okay. Or maybe it was it couldn't have been the ambulance. I don't know. <laughs> one of the cars in the accident. It could maybe. have been the ambulance. <laughs> maybe it was the car in the accident. So I have... In my notes here, quote, I'm building up, and then, quote, you're small. Oh, he was... When he's at dinner with his mom and his brother. Oh, that's right. And he, he's pounding down the spaghetti. Yeah. And they're saying, you know, you're small. And he's like, I'm building up. And he just <laughs> keeps saying up. it. Yeah, they're yeah. just saying, accept it. You're just small. And then he's like, yeah. stop, stop eating so fast. You're going to give yourself a tummy ache. He's like, I'm building up. <laughs> he just keeps saying it. Um, which I think is cool. That's the theme of this thing. Like everyone trying to say you can't do something. Yeah. Uh, and like this is where you are at, and it's it's all it's all about like getting past that. And that's why yeah. I love it about it. it's about not being limited by what other people sure. tell you what your limitations are. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Which is a great message. I'm probably stating the obvious, but I just want to. No, it's no. Good. Some people, I mean, you read the reviews back, some people clearly miss the message. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So. I, I do like when the whole building up thing, too, when his brother goes to work out and he does, like, two curls, he's like, fuck it, I'm strong enough. Yeah, 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 and he puts the bar back, yeah. <laughs> which I think he was a professional uh, football player, which I guess maybe a rug, would that be rugby, rugby I guess, or something, Australia? maybe? Yeah. A professional athlete uh, yeah. in Australia. Yeah. Hmm. Star drive-in we talked about. Mm-hmm. I, I guess that place can't possibly be around anymore. No, it's actually this is they tore it down right after. Um, oh. And uh, he went to go see. Uh, he took his father to see a movie at this driving because it was by where they lived. No, oh, because I guess he. I forget the deal. Like his, I think his mother is like from the United Kingdom and his father's Australian. Okay. And I think he lived with his mother. And then when he moved in with his father at one point in Australia, he took his father to see. Um, well, it was a Peck and Paul movie, and I forget what it was in the '60s. But anyway, Straw the, Dogs. It wasn't Straw Dogs, yeah. But Wild they went bunch. to go see it, and I think I had it. So being able to film here, I think, was a good sure. like, nice. return. That's but it was awesome. just a bummer that they tore it down. I, like, I right love afterwards. the way the uh, cop cars look in this movie. Too. Oh yeah, they have a neat design. And the mm -hmm. steam coming out of them all yeah, the time. Yeah, with the weird, like, blue lighting. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool looking. Yeah, the style on this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but the, how cool though. Even if they did rip it all down, the fact that you got something so cool on film at that location. Oh, yeah. Sure, is pretty yeah. Good. Yeah, it's immortalized yeah. now. Yep. Uh, old school legit car stunts is what I have on my yeah. notes here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That was one thing that I thought was really kind of uh, endearing to this film. And like I think it, that's it why good. Tarantino loves it so much. Or a, a factor, because he's, you know, he's all about that. He loves car stunt stuff. He, yeah. He's, like, obsessed with that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's great um, stuff. Almost as much as feet. Oh yeah, Jeez. almost. Well, that's why I love like I love car like because even when we talked about Tango and Cash, my favorite part of the movie was it's, like the over the top yeah car combat and mm -hmm. guns and stuff. That's yeah. like anything yeah. that has like really good vehicular car combat sure. in it. I'm like all in. Me too. This was really cool, stylized too. It yeah. wasn't just like let's see what we can blow up. Like they put the design that they put into these vehicles before they blew mm -hmm. them up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, he said, like, the art department or something kept bringing them, like, crazy and crazy. He's like, keep it coming. Keep it coming. Like, yeah, the guy with that boom box sideways on his back with the things going off. Yeah. Like, he, he said, just keep bringing it. I even like the little the little car chase in the, um, when he's, he's his oh. regular job is, like, a delivery, yeah. like, food delivery or whatever. And those punks, like, try to catch him. That li Even that little car chase is cool. Yeah, there's some cool stunts there, too, because the like, little car drives over a barrel and then, like, writes itself. That's right. Yeah. So here we go. Australian Film Institute, 1986. Uh, nominee for this film for Best Achievement in Production Design. Hmm. I so believe it. one nomination, no wins, unfortunately. They didn't win. It but was nominated, Lawrence though. Eastwood... Yeah, it's good that it was at least acknowledged because I, I I love to look at. I feel like I wish I would. Oh, I'll save this for my my uh, final thought. Okay. Well, don't forget. Teaser. Yeah. So uh, Lawrence Eastwood, who was the production designer for this film, 
also did Crocodile Dundee 2. I don't know if he did the first one. No, it doesn't appear that way. Just trying to see if there's anything else he's done. Oh, he did the Monster Scary Little Christmas. I don't even know what that is. I don't either. That's pretty... I gotta look it up now. Yeah. The Three Stooges TV movie in 2000? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that's cool. So they were nominated for something. Yeah. At least he got some kind of recognition. Jesus. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to continue my points here. Oh, yeah, so I noted that the police officers were extremely efficient in removing wheels without being detected. Oh, noticed. yeah. <laughs> While people... Are, well, then again, I guess they were inside making love, right? So... They were in flagrante. They could have thought they were the bumping. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, thought she was putting a little extra... Extra oomph on it. Yeah. <laughs> I have Foster's Australian for beer. Oh, that's what they were drinking. Yeah, they were drinking Foster's. Foster's. Oh, we're, okay. So, which I thought was surprising, because I was always under, under the impression that Foster's is kind of what Americans think Australians drink. I was under the impression of that, too. So, yeah, but to see this Australian film, did they put it in there because they were trying to Americanize it, quote-unquote, or did they put it in there because that's what Australians I, drink? Or or is that, like, the, the cheap beer... Like, I, I think someone once described it to me. It's like their Budweiser or something. So, so it's not like a top shelf beer, mm -hmm. but, but it's, it's like a, something it's you'll common, see. It's a yeah. common beer. Hmm. Interesting. So some of these notes again. Maybe you guys can help me. Dog face paint. Oh, the dog. Uh, the dog that jumps out oh, at him yeah, is all painted up. Is really cool. Paint. Oh, yeah. that's right. <laughs> yep. He actually said because you see the the dog with the face paint before it jumps out at him, and he said Nick. The director's commentary. No one's going to need to buy the DVD after I watch or the Blu-ray after. Me. But he said that he wished he didn't put that scene of the dog first. He wished he would have just had to jump oh, out because yeah. it's like a little warning. But he loved the look of the dog so much uh, that he wanted to have extra yeah. screen extra, time with it. Yeah. I'm glad you listened to the commentary because you got some cool info. I'm glad I remembered it. I'm surprised. Yeah. Oh yeah. So one of the songs in there is by a band called Hunters and Collectors, mm -hmm. and the song was called "Talking to a Stranger." Oh yeah. I, I would have lost money because I that sounded so much like Talking Heads to me. Oh. It was insane. Mm. Yeah. yeah. This would have been around the time period. That's another good point, though. The music in this. Yeah. Oh, like, the music soundtrack great. is like cool. Mm -hmm. He got it for a song too. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying he. I think because they got a lot of the. Um, the B side hits or whatever of I did see that of, yeah uh, they weren't know. like the big hits yeah yeah like you said B the B sides which I like even better because I think it it's it adds that even weirder out mm -hmm. of out of like very like I I will compare it this way to Mad Max where it has that kind of like it's a weird out of like other world place but the sure. first Mad Max movie there were still things you can relate to like mm -hmm. they still had a police yes. department it wasn't complete chaos it wasn't completely mm -hmm. gone like the yeah and, like. In the uh, the world of the Dark Tower, the world had not quite moved on yet. True, yeah. yeah. Well, for the well, for well you said. Dark Tower fans, well said. <laughs> I was moved. I'm sorry. I was moved. You haven't read every that. once in a while, <laughs> ten, you... fifteen years, somebody says something that really moves me, and I'm just like speechless. Have speechless. you ever read the Dark Tower? I almost moved to tears. Justin? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a common phrase in the world of Roland Deschain. Oh, okay. It's you know they. It's they, pronounced Stephen King. <laughs> <laughs> Shit! All these years. No, it, it's uh you know they they say the world has moved on, mm. meaning it's like it's like winding down, everything's dying. Yeah. Spoiler. Uh, <laughs> so somebody explained to me the whole Crabsy can't make it thing. Oh, what happened that everybody got on his balls about being impotent or whatever? Well, there was the one scene where he's all he's flustered and he's too focused on wanting to get out because mm -hmm. there's a scene where he's laying there and she's like, what's wrong? Is it me? You don't like me? And they start arguing. And she's like, do you want to do it? And he's like, nah, like, oh, he's yeah. so focused on wanting to get out and, and his problems that like everyone else is like, yeah, we're just here doing drugs, eating and getting laid. Mm -hmm. And you won't even make it because he even says uh, one of the guys when they're fighting is like. I think it's uh, Hasa or whatever the guy we liked it mm. that said um, something about maybe I'll do your girl. I heard you can't or something mm. like that. Because I think because he was just not. So did she then run off? She must have just gossiped to the girls then. Maybe because she was, she was her, tight with the girls. And, and, yeah, maybe yeah. she said something to them and it got around. I do. I do find it interesting that his girlfriend does acclimate to that life mm -hmm. inside the mm. drive-in. Like it, she's. Well, I think her situation was different from his because sure. he was or he was employed. Right. I think she was like I could think because remember he pulled up to the cops and she's like I'm on a list. She I think she was a runaway. Yeah, I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. So I have a question though. 
okay, it, it, again, maybe they were planning for the sequel. I hope I'm not jumping the gun here, but I was a little surprised that when he went for the escape, he didn't bring her with him. Well, they had that conversation where he, he's like... I don't like, think she wanted to go. But yeah. it was a really quick conversation. Like, well, I think he, he already kind of... I think it just solidified what he already knew. Like, she was already decided she was staying yeah i think it was i think everything was building up to that and when the words came out of her mouth he was like okay that's uh, yeah. you know he was like oh that confirms what i thought yeah all right and plus it was about him too moving on like he wasn't gonna let anything stop True. him from from moving on hmm. i was a little surprised a, a little surprised but also like well like i said but, I, th I think she seemed to really take yeah, to that life but i just do you f but then again who, who are any of us to say but do you think he potentially did her a disservice by leaving her? I mean... She seemed happy. Well, plus he had to make a move when he could, because he was already, like... Like, everything mm. was, like... Every plan was, like... Every door was closing. Mm -hmm. Every... And then once that car was there, he's like, I gotta get in this cop car Also, and didn't she go to the racist meeting? She did. So, fuck her. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably what he thought. He was like, oh, she's a racist. Yeah. yeah. Nah, I'm just saying. But I... I well, and then, and then I'm trying to be slightly funny, but yeah, at yeah. the same time, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, like, yeah. Maybe, you know, yeah. He, she he, was so... They didn't have as much in common as... That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. She was assimilated mm -hmm. into yes. that yeah. that society, and he wasn't. He was still an outsider. He wanted to go back out into the real world, and she didn't, and he knew that. So the chicken shot where the car drives over the chicken? Yeah. I would imagine that... I mean, that looked very real deal to me. Yeah. So that was damn near close killing an actual chicken. That chicken I hope must that was been, the first take. <laughs> that chicken must have been, like, trained or something. Yeah, it, well, he says in the director's comment, it was a well-trained chicken. Yeah. And they, like... Cause Probably they, had feed down for it, too. Yeah, and they had feed, and they said it was not going to move unless they had... And uh, he said something about his dad, too. Like, his dad... That shot was for his dad. Like, his okay. dad, like like, under... Like perspective car oh, shots or okay. something like okay. that hmm. let's see yeah so the drive-in was closed down when filming has since been demolished no longer exists but yeah that's cool to know that it was apparently shortly thereafter them filming yeah hit him that was a license plate. yeah i think i think he also said that when he made the joke about uh rambo part eight i think he said he really would have liked to directed rambo part eight but yeah they wouldn't, probably wouldn't have hired him for it oh, <laughs> or something like that some some joke yeah. All right, so let me just zip through some more points here. So hardcore racism and social issues, we touched on that already. Takes place in 1995. Uh, scrapper who took wrench to the back of knee. Remember that? When they were, uh, I guess, the car boys or whoever, when they moved in. Yeah. And then he snuck up. Uh, he cra did. Crab snuck up on them and then, like, hit one of them in the back of the leg with a wrench. Yes. Oh, really? Remember that? Yes. I felt that dude's pain. Yeah. yeah, I was like, "Damn!" Because he got him like right in the back of the knee. Like yeah. it would have effed him up. That's the second movie we've done where someone took a wrench to the back of the knee or the back of the leg. What's the, the first? first? Chappie. Oh, Remember yeah. when he's running? Oh, when yeah. he's running away and he he's... throws a wrench at him or something? That's right. Uh, shit, we're on fire. Is that a quote? Oh, that was when the 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 cop cars when they were doing the chase at the end. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he never. I guess he didn't put the gas cap back on, and the gas started coming out of the back, and then it caught a spark, and then That's he's right. like, "Oh, yeah. we're on fire!" And the back yeah. of the truck's on fire. The cop truck. The cop. I don't know what those are. Van? Not the first movie we've done where a couple of cops are on a in a truck on fire. What's the first one? Tango and Cash. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, nice explosion with an exclamation point. That explosion was insane at the end there. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, they had to shut the drive-in down after that. I mean, <laughs> they were probably planning on reopening, and then they blew the whole shit up. <laughs> Not well, the first movie we've done with a really impressive explosion. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I can guess this one, though. The Wraith. Yeah, yeah. The Wraith. <laughs> Which comes out on Blu-ray this month. There you go. Fucking right. finally. And also, too, about that explosion, which is funny because they were, I, I was, they were filming between 3 p.m. and 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you saw all the houses in yeah. the background. Yeah. Like, that were that close to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn. They actually got, a uh, like, a cease and desist letter at one point Ooh. because uh, one guy was following suit because he said he was uh, having flashbacks from World, because he was in World War II. Oh, shit. And he said he was a decorated soldier, and they went to court and stuff, and they're like, oh, what was your award you got? And he said, the Iron Cross, and they threw it out. Jeez. <laughs> wow. That was the story that Brian uh, yeah. Trench 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 Smith, Smith said, yeah. Huh. The bullet ricochet sounds throughout 
when they're firing guns and whatever, just okay. that classic, pew, pew, oh, like yeah, just the ricochet yeah. sounds, classic uh, film stuff there. I'll move on to my next point. Okay, do that. <laughs> uh, feels old school, practical sets, explosion, car stunts, like the film to me yeah. definitely felt yeah. legit old school. And in fact, it is great that it kind of centers around a drive-in because I could totally see like wanting to watch this film in a drive-in. Sure, I mean, yeah. I'm really hoping that this is the movie that they play at the Joe Bob yeah. uh, drive-in jamboree. Or that would be cool. Yeah, yeah. You guys, when is that? You guys are going? It's like in two weeks. Yeah, or but, a week. From. Yeah, but when you listen to this episode, it may have already passed. Yeah, <laughs> and you'll be like, "Yeah, sucker, thought it was going to be dead end drive." Yeah, exactly. Little did they know it was going to be Babe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just so everyone knows, Justin and Pat will be at the Joe Bob uh, at Mahoning Drive-In Jamboree. Yeah, Joe Bob. First annual. And I will be, as of right now, at Monster Mania Con in New Jersey, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, in August. Yeah, come so check out August. Mike and rub his head. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the Joe Bob Jamboree is July 15th through 18th. Yeah, 15 through 18. It was 16, and then they added Thursday. That is so Thursday, yeah. Makes sense. So, yeah, we'll, I'm sure, give you an update at some point after the fact. Not the first time we got derailed on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Crabsy has a way of dodging bullets. Check that oh, yeah. off the list. <laughs> um, okay, so that it is true. He had the worst <laughs> stance, too. He's like, oh, just worming around. Uh, so that car jump was freaking insane. Yes. Now I want to know if they if he talked about that on the uh, yeah. commentary. But correct me if this is incorrect. At the time, was that a world record? It was. Uh, One hundred and sixty three feet. Yeah. Correct me if this is correct. <laughs> <laughs> so he talked about that. Yeah, he did. He said that was one hundred and sixty three feet. Yeah, they were yeah. pretty proud of it. Wow. They said they had to build like inside the cockpit of the car. It was all like. On shock absorbers or something oh, like the entire yeah. tank, it was like a rubber room inside. So oh, when yeah. you, the, it, because that's a if you think about it, if you dropped a car, I was that's 160 a, that's some impact. feet. Yeah, yeah, that's like how many stories is that? Well, let me look it up. In a, in a story, <laughs> ten feet. I think so. Ten, now, think are we ten. talking uh, metric? Metric? How many metric <laughs> stories is that? So it'd be sixteen stories. One hundred sixty-three. It'd be like sixteen stories. Roughly. Sixteen imperial stories. Roughly. <laughs> Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it was something really That's high. insane. It is super insane, yeah. And then uh, they said that the, it didn't really, the, that car didn't really work as well after that. So the, oh, yeah, shot, the shot at the end where he's driving off, they had to shoot that first before okay. they did the, the okay. jump shot. Dude, yeah. it says 163 feet is 15 stories. Is that right? That can't yeah, be right. Maybe it's 12 feet. Uh, yeah, I think maybe it is. it's 12 feet. Because 10, if it was 10, it would be... 16. Hmm. Like, he gets up there, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, but that was impressive. Who so, did that stunt, by the way? Do you have it there? I do not. Because I was wondering if that was the, the Grant Maxwell Page or, or if that was uh, Guy Norris. No, the Max Maxwell Max Maxwell, Maxwell was uh, yeah. Invasion USA. Yeah. Yeah, right around the time I was watching this, I, I followed this uh, Instagram page called VCR Death, and they did... Um, the, the scene from Invasion USA where Max Maxwell got injured, and it was like a crazy shot, and I was just showing these guys right We should definitely right cover this. that movie sometime. I'm a fan. Yeah, there you go. Good old Chuck Norris. Oh, here we go. Dead End Drive, and the final stunt performed by the road warrior Guy Norris. Guy Norris. Cost the majority of the film's budget and was the most expensive stunt filmed. Yeah. Well, we appreciate it. Yeah. I think you guys already answered some of these, but at the time of watching the film, this is what I noted. A lot of unanswered questions. What happened to Carmen? We already talked about that. Why did she stay? I guess you guys already convinced me on that as well. Uh, did he liberate anyone? So I guess that would have been the sequel. Mm. For the um, sound of it, yeah. Because I guess past Pat felt that he should have, or at least had the power to do so. Maybe not in his initial escape, but, you know. It just feels to me like nobody else wanted to escape. I think they mm -hmm. just felt like comfortable there. Mm -hmm. I think they, they just accepted it. They felt safe and comfortable and 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 they could do what they wanted there freedom without freedom the illusion of freedom i don't think when he wrote this he had the sequel in mind 
I think like yeah. after he did it, I think then he wanted to do a Maybe sequel. he realized how many loose ends he left. Yeah, he was like, a lot shit, I should here. settle this stuff. But I think it's, as far as the point of the story goes, the, po- the story's really about him and his... Yeah, it's, it's not it's, really about the other people. No, it's not. It's it's him. But he probably thought the same thing you did. Like, oh, it would be nice for him to be inspirational. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. that's why he would have him come back. So continuing on to my uh, unanswered questions, which again, you guys already talked to me about this. I, w- I say, past Pat says, I was hoping for some sort of closure on the racism aspect, but I, I think hearing what he said on the commentary kind of wrapped that up, that mm-hmm. maybe the liberation and the, the unity. He turns into a uh, Paul Muadib. Yeah. The sleeper has awakened. <laughs> okay, so Fear is the I don't killer. know if they, they talked about this on the commentary, but 400 car wrecks or wrecked cars wow. were used at $100 each. Yeah. Wow. So that's why. Yeah, they brought them in and then painted them all and I mean, did all the stuff there. And this is a film adaptation of a short story called Crabs. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to read that. Uh, yeah, I would too. And this film is considered exploitation. Yes. So just because which it's like is a, Australia, it's like a cult movie, but Australian. Mm-hmm. That's like he did uh, when he did the Man from uh, Hong Kong. I think that was the first exploitation. Asian exploitation, like it was the first co-production like of an crossover. Australian uh, film company and an Asian film company. I think combined. Yeah, is that a good movie? Have you seen that one? Yeah, I like it. I Has have, uh, have you checked out uh, uh, George Lazenby in it or oh, Lazenby? Yeah. Lazenby, Lazenby. Yeah, laser beam. <laughs> George, George laser beam. George laser beam. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, Grant Page is in that too. Who's that? I know that name. He's a stunt man that. Does work with uh, like stuntman Mike, like stuntman Mike, pretty much same exact guy. <laughs> He's stuntman. That's true. So this was Natalie McCurry's debut, or McCurry, however you say. Okay, it. is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Sure. McFlurry. I can neither confirm nor deny. Uh, that's just, it says here on IMDb, but let's check her profile. So she has passed. That's what. Yeah, 2014. Oh, we did. We haven't even talked about Krabs, the actor, have we? No, let's I don't, look at him. I don't so know let's much look, about him. Let's look at Natalie first, real quick. I think that, he didn't have a a big film career after this, but I, I think they said he like did a lot of writing or something. Oh, uh, okay. He uh, kind of reminds me of a cross between like uh, Dave Duchovny <laughs> and like I don't know Mike Darks or something. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Gu- any Guar fans? Yeah. Any Guar fans? You know who Mike <laughs> Darks is. Natalie McCurry, McCurry, has 17 credits. Did we discuss this already? No. Mm-mm. Dead End Drive-In was her first. Hmm. Uh, Going Sane, Cassandra, Stones of Death, Glass, Mushrooms. Oh, she was in a couple episodes of Flipper in hmm. 95-96. Home and Away. I've heard of that. 97. Well, that's a TV series, so oh, not the movie. Oh, oh okay. And Oyster Farmer was her last role in 2004. And, yes, yeah, she died in, 10 years later, 2014, 48, as Mike said. Yeah, that's, that's sad. I didn't know that's she passed. Sad, yeah. Hmm. Sucks. Yeah. So we have to talk about crabs. Yeah. <laughs> so Ned Manning, born in 1950, has 34 actor credits. 1950, wow. So he was already, like... He was in his mid thirties. He was in his mid thirties. Yeah, he lied. He lied to. Bro- he said oh, that he was he like lo- twenty four or something. He does look younger. He actually can pull that off. Yeah. And Brian, uh, he said that uh, he's glad he lied because he wouldn't have hired him if he knew he was thirty four. Mm-hmm. He's definitely got a youthful face. Mm-hmm. He doesn't look eighteen for sure. But oh, interesting. It looks like uh, he was also in at least one episode of Home and Away, the same TV series oh, she was in. So. It'd be cool if they were in the same episode. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I don't really see anything of his jumping out of me. This is... Yeah, which is weird, because he's good in this movie. Like, Mm -hmm. you'd think you would have seen more of him. He could have crossed over into American films, unless he didn't want to. He may not have wanted to. Yeah. Who knows what the crabs wants. Uh, Anyway, so... Any final thoughts before we proceed to uh, ratings? Anything Um. we missed? Any elements? I'm sure there's tons of let stuff Let me check my notes real quick, because I do actually have notes. don't have a lot, but let me go. Uh... It's pretty interesting watching this again as they, like, pull into their spot. Mm-hmm. And it's like, 
you know, it's just them pulling into a parking spot. That parking spot then now becomes yeah. like yeah. a location yeah. in the movie. Like they're, it becomes their home. home. Yeah. <laughs> Which like we you know when we go to the drive in, like you go to see three movies and you can camp there and sometimes mm. you're there all weekend, like, you know. Yeah, it kind of becomes your that, campground. Yeah, yeah, that becomes like your yeah, your home. Yeah, the only other thing I wanted to mention, there's a you guys are actually probably familiar with this author. If you've seen uh Bubba Hotep, mm-hmm. Joe Lansdale. Yeah. Yeah. He wrote a story called The Drive-In. Nove- it's a novella. Mm-hmm. Actually ended up turning into... It has two sequels. It's about these people that go to a drive-in and they get trapped in there and all this weird, weird, weird shit happens. Mm-hmm. It's almost bizarro. Before, Lansdale? Yeah, Joe Lansdale. Okay. He's a Texan. Mm-hmm. Bubba Hotep, you can kind of tell I feel like it. there's something else, too. Um, I know that he wrote. I can't think of it. I have to look it There's up. A bunch of stuff. But yeah, he's saying, very famous. But anyway, it's I read that before I saw this movie. Oh, okay. Years before I saw this movie, it's not similar at all, except the the basic premise of going to the drive-in and being trapped there and not being able to get out. But Joe Lansdale's the drive-in is bizarre as hell. Oh, like, really? Way out there. You'd probably love it, Justin. Oh, okay. I think you would. Very highly regarded in like the the horror slash bizarro writing community and stuff writing and fans of okay yeah but i just wanted to mention i give that a shout out because like that's a very he's a hugely influential writer and that particular story is a hugely influential story by him and was it one more time for the readers that story joe lansdale listeners listeners who are also readers the drive-in the drive-in there's a there's a collected volume called the complete drive-in that has all three and it's one, it's like, you know, a continuous story, basically. So his films, yeah, Bubba Hotep. Yep. Incident on and off a mountain road. Oh, the Masters of Horror episode. Yes. Yeah, Christmas with the Dead. Cold in July. I've heard Cold in July is good. Hmm. Anyway. All right, final thoughts? Is that it? No, I got no, that's it. That was it. That was the only thing I didn't talk about. Okay. In my notes. Cool. All right, so shall we rate this thing? Let's do it. All right. Uh, Mike, since it's your film, you select the order in which we will proceed. Justin, Pat, and I'll round it out. Sorry, Justin. You're on the spot. That's okay. I think I'm going to give it a 7.6. Nice. I don't know where my other ratings land, but I feel like that's pretty high for where I usually go lately. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. I really liked it a lot. I wish I would have seen it when I was a teenager. Me too. Because I feel like this would have like, I think this really would have popped out at me because mm-hmm. it's it's very, very 80s. Like the mm-hmm. music, the yeah, look, everything's very 80s, which I also liked when I was a teenager, which was in the 90s, was only 10 years away, but sure. It would have had instant nostalgia right there for yeah. me. The, the cast is great. Like I think the the look, everything, I would have like fell in love with this like instantly as a teenager. Mm-hmm. I, when I did as an adult, so, yeah. you know. Um, I definitely, I'll probably watch this 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 is probably going to go on my regular rotation now. Yeah, I just uh, can't wait for the future point in time where new wave becomes popular again. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Apparently it's 1995, yeah. which that didn't happen. Yeah, we were yeah. This film off. is shot really well though. Like it, the it, colors, it really is. the lighting. There's a lot to be said about the Who's production the cinematographer? design. Cinematographer would it be more the cinematographer, or the art. Art well, department. I do think that it was a production design. Is, yeah, I think the cinematography is good, but, though, too. Yeah, the cinematography has to capture all that stuff. Well, who's so. both? Who's the cinematographer and the production Well, design? production design we already talked about. Oh, did we? Who was it? Um, I'll say it again. He was the guy that was nominated for an award. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob Shaku. Who, who also Bob did... Shaku. Yeah, who also did... Uh, you sure that wasn't Janky Bone Shoes? That might have been. I always get that mixed up. Uh, let me see... Cinematographer Paul Murphy. Okay. And uh, production design was Lawrence Eastwood. Who oh, that's right, about. Lawrence Eastwood. So Paul Murphy, let's see what he's done. 22 credits. Bliss was his first, and then Dead End Drive-In. Wow, second film. Second film. Uh, let's see. Stolen Babies, a TV movie. Hmm. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie. Oh, Tunnel Vision in uh, 95. Mm. Anyway, yeah, uh, that though, that's the biggest one that jumps out at me is the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. That That's interesting. That's a weird, weird, like, curveball there. Yeah. I don't know, but okay. 
<laughs> so right, that's Pat, it. Oh my, oh, my turn. Okay. Uh, so Justin did 7.6. 7. 6. I'm not going that high. Um, you don't have to. I did want to make sure I went higher than you, so yeah. you don't have to go to high. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to... It's definitely above average for me. And I think what knocks it down a bit for me is hearing him say he didn't have plans for a sequel tells me that there were gaping plot holes. That, I suspect uh, that he didn't. Yeah. That's okay. I, mean. I shouldn't call them plot holes. I should say things that I yearned for him to like wrap up. Wrap up. I, I wondered why they went down some of these roads so in your face. Mm. And I was just hoping for some A kind of pay like off. payoff. Yeah. I, I still get the theory of why that stuff was there, but mm -hmm. it just it it just kind of floated out there. It didn't. Yeah, and you're not the first person to say that yeah. either. Like I've seen. I'm reviews. still gonna give this above average though. I'm I'm gonna say like a six point three this is where I'm absolutely at. Absolutely fair. And what really wins me over with this film, it's the I do really like the production design. It's it's. A really nice looking film. The lights, the cars, mm -hmm. or even cars they're smashing and destroying. They mm -hmm. all look really cool. And I'm I've never been a car guy, but I enjoyed watching it's this. Got a and cool then look. The stunts, that right there, mm -hmm. it had that old school, real legit practical stunts with cars, men risking their lives mm -hmm. for our entertainment. In addition to the car stunts and the overall production design and the look of the film was also even the sound effects which were great. I talked about the, the ricocheting bullet mm, sounds yeah, yeah, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. I thought you take all that, you add it together, it's old school classic cinema. You know, and I love the fact it was made in Australia. Yeah. You know? yeah. It, it wasn't, I, you know, some a Hollywood production. It was like Australian and it just, it added that extra little bit of... Uh, to me, that adds a like a, an extra element to it. Mm -hmm. Like a, a positive element yeah. for me. It gives it a little character. Yes. It's like we've said before. I feel like you can feel the fun that they're having. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Feel, like it feels like it, the fun that they're having is shine through. Which I'm assuming they had fun. It feels like they did. It feels yeah. like they did. So I'm going to say 6.3. Mike? Uh... I mean, I'm definitely going to go higher than you, Pat, because, again, I this is one of those movies that's in my Pepper Shack or whatever. Pepper Shed. Pepper Shed. Mm -hmm. I always say Shack. I don't know why. The Grape Shack. Grape, grape shack. shack. I mean, who doesn't know that? I know. <laughs> How old are you? You had a lifetime to figure this shit out. <laughs> but um, I don't know if I'll go quite as high as you, Justin, but slightly below. Okay. 7.3. But that's good. I mean, that's, yeah, that's very good. You know? Yeah, I, I think the, those ratings reflect. I mean, for this our... kind of movie, that's pretty good. For what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. We'll see you next week, folks. <laughs> Can't top that. Let's we'll end on a high note. Yeah. Uh, so our average is 7.06 oh, for yeah. this one. Yeah. Nice old solid seven. But I will say this. This is a fun film. You should watch it. It's an hour and a half. Who doesn't have an hour and a half to kill? But it is not horror. Yeah. So if you look at the cover and you hear the title and you think it's going to be about some slasher that's going around killing guys at the cinema, yeah. that's not what this Wrong. is. And that was what I was thinking yeah. I was getting myself into. And it was like, this is not what this I This is thought. a good time to give that disclaimer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So anyway, uh, that's all I have. Any final thoughts? Um... No, I, I got all my points out. Justin, what do you got? Uh, last thing I'll mention, it has not really to do with this movie per se, but on the on the Blu-ray, the two the one documentary was about like stuntmen, mm -hmm. which is yes. really cool too because they did like several stunt scenes okay. that they show you, and then they break it down like oh, cool. how each you know and how dangerous they were like basically diving off a cliff like this rocky cliff where it looks like you'll easily die, yeah. and they're just like putting like cereal like bo like containers that hold cereal boxes yeah like cardboard boxes and throw mattresses on top and like all right jump on that and then My just God. like uh just crazy stuff like i think one guy broke his ribs like mm. being jerked off a horse being pulled off Was a horse a by a, sh uh, a <laughs> harness jerked off by a horse you know what he deserved to have his ribs broken <laughs> i mean if that's all you got was broken ribs i would say high risk high reward um <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, but it's crazy. They don't have very soft hands. No. Mm -mm. Uh, they don't even have hands. They're horses. <laughs> They're <hooves. laughs> they <have hooves. laughs> um, But then the second thing I watched, which I was like, oh, I'll kind of watch this. It was just, it was about, it was called uh, Hospitals Don't Burn Down or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, this thing, 
this was fucking brutal. Yeah. Like, it was just like, you're just watching, it looks like a made-for-TV movie or something, and then it's like some guy gets caught smoking in the hospital, and they're like, oh, you have to put that out. And he's like, oh, okay. And then later you see him again, he's like sneaking a smoke, and like some woman throws some laundry down the laundry chute. Oh. And then the woman comes by again, he flicks it down the laundry chute. Mm. But then like, uh, then later on, you know, someone throws more laundry or something, and it hits it, and mm-hmm. then it the, the catches on fire. Before you know it, the whole hospital's on fire. But it's not like, oh, there's a fire in the far. It's not a fire. Far. There's not a fire, and they call the fire company, they put it out, and everything. Was that happy. your Australian accent? Yeah, I did something. I don't know what it was. <laughs> but they, uh, it was like total, like, chaos. Like, those old disaster movies from the 70s. Oh, it was that, like, people oh, falling yeah. out of, like, built the windows on fire. I was like, whoa, what the hell? I thought this was going to be, like, oh, cool. a... cool. I gotta watch that. Yeah, I thought it was, like, an instructional, like, a training video. Like, this is why you don't smoke in hospitals. Well, maybe was it like, was. Have you ever seen those old instructional videos? <laughs> oh, yeah, it might have been, yeah. <laughs> this, was, this was intense. I was, like, watching. I was like, oh, my God, dude. Like, this is crazy. Yeah, I gotta watch that, because I, yeah. I, like, yeah, obviously, I've already mentioned, I have that Blu-ray, too. Yeah. Highly recommend that anyone at home, like, mm. You know, you're getting enjoyment from the movie, but the special features for that are fantastic. Mm. Arrow, they usually yeah. have pretty good in-depth stuff, yeah. so it, it's worth it. That's why I brought it up, too, because if anyone was on the fence about picking up the, the the Blu-ray, the Arrow edition Blu-ray, like that might sell, it too, to see that wild uh, mm-hmm. thing, which you'll probably find on YouTube, I think. about. But you won't <laughs> see it in, you know... For high definition. Glorious high definition. 4K. It's not 4K. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, anyway, all right, on that note, you guys good? No, I'm good. Oh, I'm not good at all. Okay. All right, so, yes, we'll be back in a couple weeks then with another episode, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, in the meantime, continue to check us out on our social media. We are on Instagram. We are on Facebook. We are on Twitter and Discord. And obviously, you can find us on Buzzsprout or pretty much wherever you get your podcast. So spread the word. And uh, we appreciate you being a member of the guild. So, yes, Justin? We do. You won't find us on MySpace. No. Uh, we are not on what are other things we're not on. We're not on LinkedIn yet. No. Um, <laughs> not on LinkedIn. No, that's about it. That's all I got to add. That's it. Mike, yeah. you good? Yeah, man. That's I have nothing. Okay. N- nothing of worth. Yep. Typical. Not just to add, I just have nothing to <laughs> I have zero value on this planet. <laughs> All right, well, uh, fellas, I will see you next time here on the MacGuffin Guild. All right, let's roll Until out. Until next time. Peace. I'm going to see you. See yous. I raised you better than this. I think one guy broke his ribs, like, mm. being jerked off a horse. Being pulled off what a horse a by a, sh- uh, a <laughs> harness. Being jerked off by a horse. You know what? He deserved to have his ribs broken. <laughs> I mean, if that's all you got was broken ribs, I would say high risk, high reward. Um, uh, uh, yeah, but it's crazy. They don't have very soft hands. No. Mm-mm. Uh, they don't even have hands. They're horses. <laughs> they're <laughs> <boobs>. <laughs>